Hello everyone, today I'm doing a video on leatherworking stuff. Uh, it's actually a video that's going to cover the Angelus Angelus leather paints that have apparently just been released everywhere. So I start with vegetable tan leather. Vegetable tan leather is, okay, vegetable tan leather refers to the tannage or method of tanning the cowhide into leather. It's called vegetable because of the natural materials it uses like tree bark and other things like that. Since it's vegetables, it's like eco-friendly and all that fun stuff. So I start out by measuring some squares that I inevitably don't really use because I had five dies at the time and then in the process of making this video, I went and bought like three more. I didn't even account for the extra dies I would for sure buy in the future. So I split it into six parts. I wanted the five dyes and then a natural. I wrote on it with pencil. Normally you wouldn't do that, but I was doing it because it's literally just a tester sheet. I just took the red dye first and painted it. Paintbrushes don't work super well for dye. I would recommend these. They're called wood daubers. I'm not exactly sure. They're basically just a piece of metal with some cotton on the end to pick up a lot more dye and deposit it onto the leather, which is what you would want to do for an actual project. From what I know, you want the dye to penetrate through the whole piece of leather rather than just on top, like or just sitting on top like it is with the paintbrush. You can tell when I put, I think the mahogany and the saddle brown, saddle tan, uh, since I didn't use as much dye, it didn't penetrate through the whole piece and it left it patchy. You want to get dye through the whole piece of leather. You normally want both sides to be uniform. So this is saddle tan. It's a very yellowish color, yellowish brown color. I think it's a really nice color even though it's saddle tan. The dye is very liquidy, like water kind of liquidy, so I did drip some. Most of the time that doesn't matter because you would be covering the whole project. Then I go to black and it's actually not as hard to get opaque and they say black is a hard color because you have to get it super opaque for it to look well but this dye that I'm using seems to lay it on thick enough and well enough that it's normally not an issue for me. There I was pointing out where I noticed it was really splotchy so I was gonna go I'm gonna go back and do a second coat on those after I finish the other dye and then and then green. This color my sister actually picked. I don't know if I'd ever normally pick green dye for leather. I like, I definitely prefer the more natural tones. I feel like this green might be a really good color to do some leaf or forest kind of detailing for a project. Because it's so liquidy, it did run a little bit because the leather wasn't completely flat. I didn't take my time making sure it was flat like usual. So it ran a little bit into the mahogany color, but it's not a big deal because it's just a test sheet, like I said. And like, I didn't match up the edges perfectly, but it'll all be okay. It's literally just to see how the colors work on, or the colors and the process of putting the Angelus, Angelus, in Angelus, I don't know. Leather paints on real leather, not on shoes or backpacks or canvas bags or whatever else they were advertising it on. I wanted to try it so I can use it on wallets or dice bags or whatever else I decide to do. This I had just gotten some new dyes, so I was showing how hard it is to open them. You can get the like plastic thing off, but then there's like a second plastic thing that has a bunch of dye on it still. I rip it open with a tool so I don't get dye all over my hands. They recommend you wear gloves, but I don't. So I get dye everywhere. That's just how that goes. It, hasn't hurt me yet. The dye I use is the Phoebings Pro dye, which is an alcohol-based dye, specifically made for the natural scrap leather and the vegetable tan leather, which is what I'm using. There's also a water-based dye, which I have not used, so I don't know anything about it. This was days later when I had bought more dye, so I was measuring it out again, and this time I thought to myself, when I buy more dye colors, I might as well leave myself space for those. So I bought three colors of dye and I measured out like one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven spots. So I got show brown, which is another really natural darker brown color. The show brown color is a really nice dark, like chocolatey rich color, which I am excited to use since I just got it. I haven't used it on a project yet. And then 
I decided to be smart for once in my life and go back and write what colors of dyes I had used on the spots because initially it was very easy to tell which color was which but then I got more of the natural brownish colors where this one looks fairly similar to the saddle tan and the next one looks fairly similar to this so I wanted to make sure I knew what colors I was using on what so when I reference them later I will be able to get exactly the what I want and light brown that's what the next one is it looks very similar to the saddle tan but the saddle tan is a lot more yellow the lighting doesn't do a ton of justice to these colors and how splotchy they really are and then after every dye, because I use the same paintbrush, you have to go wash it. And I use this brush cleaners. That's, it works so well to get your brushes nice and clean. I use it off paints, every kind of paint stuff. So now with the Angelus, the prepare thing, this, it's literally just a bottle of acetone which I did not know until I purchased it and then looked at it. So if you're gonna do this, you can just buy straight acetone from like the nail, the nail supply section where you can get a giant bottle for the same price. That would be my recommendation. That's what I'm gonna do after I'm done with this one. First color is champagne, which looking at in the store, I didn't realize it has like an iridescent sparkliness to it, which I'm not mad at, but I just wasn't ready for. I'm showing a paintbrush here because normally I would not use the little nail polish applicator that comes in the bottle. The terracotta is my favorite color that I picked out. It's such a deep, rich color and it just laid on everything really nicely. Buttercup, I don't know exactly know why I picked this one. I don't, I think I had a plan for it. Yellow's not normally my go-to. Maybe it's cause I have so many brown colors. I thought it would look nice on the browns and the olive. I very much like green. After I said I don't buy green, I wouldn't buy green dye, but I thought like accents of green might be really nice. See here, I thought ahead this time because I was like, I'm gonna buy more colors. I only have four. So I did leave space for more colors this time, just not the original dye. And then I decided I would use some more colors on different spots to see how they cover in different ways. These leather paints dried considerably fast. They took a lot less long than I thought. I got the satin finish because they were out of the matte and all they had was high gloss or satin. So I got satin because I prefer matte on a normal day. The first one I messed up, I was gonna cover strip by strip so I could test more finishes, but I covered the first on the saddle tan just full, but that's fine. We can see the process on everything else. I did notice that the finisher really darkens the dye and it doesn't it doesn't ever lighten up that's just how dark it is on the black it looks really nice but on the other colors where you're going for that saddle tan natural lighter color i don't i don't like it at all so from here on out if I, from here on out when i use the leather dye i will take the finisher and try to go right on top of the on top of the paint again rather than just like splatting it all over which might look janky, might not look janky. We'll have to see when we get there. And then I went and did the same thing for the second piece uh, of leather I bought. I feel like these colors do look a lot better on the browns, which are the colors that I normally would select. So it's just the same colors again. It's the champagne, terracotta, buttercup, and then olive, and then the finishers. And then surprise, lo and behold, I went and bought some more colors. First, this seems to be a common theme. I try to get something done and then I just go buy more colors. So I got a tan, which I thought would look really nice on some of the darker browns for the more natural look, but it, Pretty much only looks good on the darker browns, the mahogany and the show brown. And I got a pink for, I had my little sister in mind. It's just a color that I associate with her. So if I ever made something for her, I would want to use that on, on it. And then the metallic gold, I wanted to try a specifically metallic color. So when I saw that they had the metallics and they were the same price as the regular colors, I was like, oh heck yeah, why not? And here are the final results. I'm looking forward to experimenting more with these on actual products and not just the tester strips. From what I have seen, they do not scratch off. I haven't tried super hard, but they don't scratch off and they bend with the leather. So I would recommend these. They're fun to use. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching.